Hello, David Butler. Uh, you are the Chief Marketing Officer of Park Office. Uh, you are uh, Irish-based startups operating in uh, a different location around the road. And uh, the way you describe yourself is that you are providing a desking solution kind to, uh, for parking lots and for parking management uh, of companies. So can you maybe introduce yourself and the company? Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks very much for having me, Jean Eve. And um, so, yeah, Park Office uh, is a parking software for smart offices. And um, we started a couple of years back, um, based around a, a very simple insight, and um, which was with parking management was was just uh, very difficult for employers. And um, so we wanted to develop um, a market leading solution that that would really uh, solve parking problems for companies. So we uh, quite quickly realized that, that three to four um, types of parking issues pop up again and again and again. Um, things like a, a lack of availability for space, um, the parking administration being overly onerous, um, stuff like uh, companies being worried about the carbon footprint um, of their employees traveling to and from work. So we developed uh, a software solution which allows companies to solve these problems. So, as you mentioned, one of, one of the kind of key features is, is like hot desking for, for parking spaces, but we also have lots of other cool features which, which allow companies to cut down on their, on their kind of carbon footprint, to reduce the amount of people who are driving to work if, if that's what they'd like. Although in, in a COVID environment, uh, interestingly enough, a lot of people are, are looking to actually increase the amount of people who, who drive to work as, as commuters are looking to turn away from public transport. And, and this is something we've also been able to adapt Park Office to do. So, no, we've been growing really fast and we're working with, with companies of all shapes and sizes in, in 10 countries across the world. Uh, lots of like, Fortune 500 and, mm. and Coke companies. Um, and it's, it's a really exciting time to be in, in this space. So you are not a whole company, you are two and a half uh, years old um, and you are touching a lot of things. There are a lot of points we, 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 we can cover uh, during this podcast. But uh, first of all, maybe, um, yes, it's like about optimizing the surface and the usage of the space. So that w when we discussed prior to the, um, the, the podcast, um, uh, my, my perception that you were the natural extension of the co-working approach saying, okay, we optimize the, the, the usage of the space, we uh, make indeed the desking, but we flexibilize everything. And one feature that is only 10% for the moment of your whole activity, but it seems very interesting, is that you pull together parking lots in a neighborhood so that the company A or the co-working space A can use the parking lots that uh, are owned or managed by the company Y next door according to the usage or the, the, the number of lots that, that, that it used. And you mentioned a very interesting number is that um, in Dublin, with where you are based, 70% uh, of the parking lots are empty all the time. Um, yeah, so I, I suppose traditionally with parking, um, if, if you think back to, to how towns and cities were designed before we had technology, um, I suppose parking spaces were, were designed to cover every eventuality. So that, that meant that traditionally a, a company, if, if they thought that they might at some stage need 200 parking spaces and they would have a parking lot for, for 200 parking spaces. But in reality, um, a lot of the time, uh, they, they don't have that, that need. Um, so what we would, one of the, the kind of key solutions, which would be very popular um, and is, is increasing massively in popularity is, is the ability for, for uh, tenants in shared buildings to share their parking resources. So how that would work is, let's say that we have a bank and a co-working space who are in a modern office development that's shared. The bank um, might have 100 parking spaces and the co-working space might have 100 parking spaces. Well, let's say that the bank on average, um, maybe 20 or 30 of those spaces aren't being used by their staff. They are actually able to rent out their parking spaces directly to the tenants and clients of the co-working space um, and then the, the, they can use the money to offset the real estate cost. So that's very popular um, and it gives them the flexibility because they can rent it out on a, on a daily basis to people who have secure access to their building. It's not opening them up to new kind of liability pieces and if on the one day a week or the two days a week that they need their 100 spaces, they get their 100 spaces. The, the kind of beauty of, of that particular park office feature is it only rents out the surplus that are going to be available mm -hmm. um, that, for, that partic for any particular day. So, yeah, look, we, we're all about just increasing the usage of, of, of kind of uh, parking space. And 
And as you mentioned, um, there's a massive amount of parking space around the world that, that's just not being used at any time. If, if you mm. think that if someone drives from their home to their place of work, that, that uh, every day, and if everyone does that, that means that at any given time, half the parking spaces in the world are empty. Because yeah, and it won't, uh, yeah, it won't yeah. Uh, uh, improve, the situation won't improve as people are now really walking and uh, staying at home uh, most of the time. So it is on those, those lots that will remain empty. Um, just uh, prior to, to, to speaking about uh, self-mobility, uh, you mentioned also that, of course, we know that parking lots is a lot of symbolic uh, behind it. So the closer you are to the, the front door, uh, likely the higher you are in the hierarchy, uh, so you, you were mentioning things that also ex um, that we are also seeing in ways that um, traditional office space are managed. It means resistance. So mm -hmm. people don't want to give up their allocated desk, or allocated space, um, and the same way they are quite, they might be quite reluctant to give up their allocated uh, parking lot with the name or the or the or the, or the, or the plate that is written on the, on there on the wall in front of it. Um, how do you? overcome that resistance and what are the tricks there yeah so so to be honest when we started off we were worried about that sort of of resistance and yeah. it's not really there and um, yeah. i would think that in certain more mature businesses um you would find some of that sort of hesitancy um where they're quite top heavy businesses which are quite bureaucratic and hierarchical and um, mm. but ultimately those businesses are just going to be left behind um, and I, I think that they're starting to realize that and, and i think there's another thing i think i think greta thunberg and, and the whole environmental movement has fundamentally changed how a lot of corporate leaders think over the last 18 to 24 months and um, i think probably when we started we were getting a little bit about that pushback now, corporate leaders are the first people to adopt and endorse um, when we roll out. Um, I think that there's increasing pressure on uh, leaders within businesses now to be seen to be more responsible in how they travel to and from work. Um, and if, in, in a lot of cases, that means that, fair enough, if, if they need to drive once or twice a week because they need their car for business use during the day, or maybe they need to pick up their children after work or whatever, that that's fair enough. But that on the other days that they're driving and, and on the days that their parking space isn't being used, that that, that parking space is, is being used by other people and, and that companies are taking the amount of parking and the amount of cars um, in the local community that they're taking them off the streets, um, mm. which, is, which is massively important because the less cars on the street, the more space we have for cycle lanes, bus lanes, uh, all that sort of stuff. So, so I think that that is of, of massive importance um, for corporate leaders. And, and that's really been a sea change over the last kind of two years or so. Yes, that, that's the, it can seem almost like a contradiction that you are a company working on parkings or parking lots, management of parkings, um, which is less and less popular because cars, um, sales of cars is decreasing. We see that indeed people are more cycling up to, the spa, to, to, to their uh, home office that at, Kind of, they, they tend to take more public transportation uh, more often, um, but you, you 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 see yourself as taking part in this whole shift in the old story of uh, optimizing mobility uh, yeah. needs. Yeah, so so I think it's very similar to co-working. It, it, that would be akin to saying that that kind of co-working is odd in that um, as people work from home more often, there's less and less of a need for formalized office spaces. But I think that we all realize that while the home office or while home has a role in the future of work potentially a centralized headquarters or centralized office uh, has a role also uh, satellite flexible offices have a role um, and I suppose the way we'd look at it with parking is I, I don't think parking is is going to go anywhere and um, I think that some of the some of the debt nails around private car ownership um, are propagated by uh, by certain large car sharing companies. I think if you look at, at mm. what the World Economic Forum has to say, they're predicting the car ownership will double between now and 2050. Um, I think that autonomous cars is obviously going to have an impact on how those cars are kind of parked, um, but ultimately cars are, are going to need somewhere to park. And I think mm. that the future of work isn't necessarily in uh, in centralized business districts. It might be um, 
uh, the future of work is 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 not uh, going to have many parking spaces. But I would think in, in more suburban environments um, that you there is always going to be a role for the car in the workplace. I think what's probably going to be different is as opposed for that being five days a week, that might only be two days a week. Um, and that will massively reduce the environmental impact, that will massively reduce congestion, but also it raises a massive issue and challenge for companies um, in how can they manage, um, how can they, I suppose, manage their real estate assets and, and parking ultimately is, is a real estate asset, it costs money the mm -hmm. same way office space does. Um, how can they manage those assets um, in a way that allows uh, them to cater for their employees, cater for the local community, and, and to, to minimize their, their spend. And, and ultimately, software like Park Office has a massive role to play in that. What about uh, bicycles and uh, parkings for bicycles? We know that if you are a co-working space somewhere in downtown or a city center, uh, it's hard to uh, have those secured uh, bicycle parkings. Are you in, the, in that already? or? Um, so we would have uh, we would have certain companies who would use um, who would use Park Office for for that particular reason. Yeah, also for electric electric charging points. Yeah. And yeah. I suppose ultimately what we can do is is uh, manage uh, or become the centralized point for managing everything that's happening in in your employee car park. So that could be um, in the future. Um, what that and actually to be honest, in the present for some of our clients, what that means is that they have. Uh, 100 parking spaces, they have 10 electric charging points, um, and you can book in and out of a space for an electric charging point. And um, they might have 10 car sharing uh, options down there. And um, so you can book in and out or, or from, the, from car sharing. And um, you might have uh, 20 priority spaces for people who carpool. Um, and, and people who carpool definitely get parking spaces at work. Um, and then you might have a certain space set aside for, for bicycles, so on and so forth. Now, there is one massive flag on the play here, which is that this was in a pre-COVID environment. And I think yeah. we're in a post-COVID environment, which has radically changed how people are currently, one, how people are working, and, and the knock-on effect of that is how people are traveling to work. Um, and I think that until we're in a position where vaccines are widespread and um, if we get to a stage where vaccines are widespread and um, that the environment that we're in at the moment is going to be radically different and it's going to be less public transport usage more people working from home but when they are working from the office they'll want to drive and that is again raising big challenges for for you know large occupiers and, and co-working firms who have a much more volatile attendance. So they don't really know who's going to be in and, and when, or the predictability and patterns of who's going to be in and when um, is, is much more volatile. Um, and to manually manage that, and traditionally you might have had a, a person in a hut who would tick people off on a list as they drove in and out, or who'd manually let up a barrier. Um, to manually manage that um, in a much more volatile environment is, is becoming more and more challenging for, for companies. So what we what we can do is, is we can kind of plug in and play with our software and, and that can increase the amount of people who park at work by up to 40%, purely by just monitoring uh, who's due to be in and when, and I suppose uh, in milliseconds using algorithms, joining those pieces of the pie together. Perfect. Very interesting. Uh, all those walls are connecting and uh, aligning to some extent. As uh, yes, as, you, as, you, as we started with, uh, that you are complementary to the flexible model. So we all believe that at Cork Europe, that uh, the the corking and flexible model is just the future of the office in general. And just you are just adding, adding this chapter regarding what what is outside the building and uh, to 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 make it uh, uh, consistent to some extent. Um, Thank you so much, Dahiva, for, 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 for the discussion. Um, I remind that we have the Coworking Europe conference in Vienna uh, at the end of November. Um, and we will have a hybrid, uh, hybrid event this year. So we will have a physical conference, but we have also solutions for, the, for people who want to join us virtually. So uh, feel free to log in and uh, to join the, the conference in either way. Thank you again, uh, Dahi, for, 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 for the discussion. Uh, Thanks very much. And, and keep us posted about the next step for, for Park Office. Perfect. Thanks very much, Shani. Bye-bye.